Welcome back to this week's technical. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, I make one of these videos a week and then I also try and do a vlog a week. That's more following me around on farm. Consider clicking that subscribe button, ringing the little bell next to it. That means you get notifications about new videos. And then if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up at the end and leave me a comment with some feedback. Anyway, on with the technical. And we are sticking on the repro theme. Now, for those of you who have been involved with cattle, especially breeding cattle, you'll be aware of the term free martin. Now, some of you might know exactly what that is and how it's formed. Some of you might be aware a bit more peripherally about what it is. And some of you might have never heard of it at all. It's a fairly simple concept, so let's pull it apart. Through domestication, a lot of what we've asked livestock to do for us is to become more fertile and specifically more fecund. That means having a greater litter size. That could be an animal which already has multiple offspring in one go. For example, the wild boar, we've still asked them to increase that for domestic pigs. Or it could be an animal which naturally in the wild would most commonly have one offspring, think a wild sheep. We've asked them to increase that to two and sometimes even three. Now in cattle, we generally aren't aiming for twins, but we have asked them to be a bit more fertile. And roughly one in 200 domestic bovine births results in twins twins, with a lot of different factors feeding into that genetics and nutrition being the major ones. And in cattle, this creates a specific challenge, and we call this challenge free martinism. Like I said, twin birds are reasonably rare in cattle, and roughly on average probabilities, we're expecting about half of those pairs will be same sex, so a heifer and a heifer, or a bull and a bull, and the other half will be opposite sex pairs, so a heifer and a bull. Each twin has its own placenta, that's how it derives nutrition and oxygen from its mother. In cattle, you unique within livestock species, at around day 40, those twin placentas will fuse. And that means you have joining up of blood vessels between the two different placentas, and those two twins start to exchange various factors between themselves, including male sex hormones, which will come from the male twin and seep across into the blood supply of the female twin. Specifically, we're concerned with a reproductive hormone called anti-malarian hormone, or AMH. And unsurprisingly, it interferes with the normal development of the female reproductive tract in that female twin. Not only that, but she will also receive some cells from her twin brother through that blood supply. And that's also going to interfere with the development of that female reproductive tract. So that's things like her ovaries, her uterus, her cervix, her vagina. And these abnormalities result in our free martin. And what does that mean once the free martin heifer actually hits the ground? Although the genotype, i.e. the genetic code of this heifer is female, her phenotype, i.e. how the animal actually turns out, is rather masculinized. And the effects are variable too. Not all free muttons have all the hallmarks. So small ovaries which don't produce much or any of the female reproductive hormones. Externally, they often have a hairy, tufty vulva, more hair than you'd expect, and also an enlarged clitoris. In practice, this means somewhere between 90 to 95% of these animals will never breed. And those that do probably don't have the really obvious phenotypic changes we'd expect to see. That really has two key takeaways. Cattle farmers who are breeding their own replacements, whether they're beef or dairy, need to keep really good records because it's amazing how often those free martins make it into the bulling heifer group. That means extra vaccines, extra feed, potentially some AI or hormones could be poured into them as part of a reproductive intervention. In the vast majority of cases, that's going to be a waste of time and money. The other takeaway is that that means somewhere between 5 and 10% of them will still be fertile to an extent, so we can't use it as a nailed on guarantee of infertility. If you're a purely terminal beef herd or a flying dairy herd, you probably need to worry less, but keep those records nonetheless, just in case some of those animals end up in a breeding herd. Now, does it have any effect on the male twin? Not that we're aware, testicle size seems to be slightly reduced. Not that that seems to have much bearing on the subsequent fertility of that male twin. And does it happen in other species? Most of the time, no, and that's just as well because most other livestock species have much bigger litter sizes and that would make breeding decisions, selecting replacements, a lot more complicated. Saying that, there have been isolated cases in sheep, goats, and pigs. But free martinism, if you were interested, is also a trope used by some of the more prominent science fiction writers of our time. Hopefully, if you're new to the concept of free martins, or if you knew a little bit about them but weren't entirely clear on what they were, 
this vlog has cleared it up for you. If it hasn't, I've put a load of articles in the video description, some straightforward, plain English explanations of what free martins are and what relevance they have to the farmer. Otherwise, that's it from me this week. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it, leave me a comment, and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'll see you for the next one.